Welcome to Math with Mrs. Bibb. Today we'll, we will be writing and interpreting equations and then also solving equations, which you will find much of this to be a review. We're going to write an equation for each sentence or scenario. One and two are sentences and then number three on the next slide is a scenario. So the first thing I would do is I would indicate that this is, of course, the number 20. This means to subtract. This means to divide, or the answer to a division problem. What am I dividing? I'm dividing 7 and x. And then one thing I want to really, really point out is that when you see is, that's where the equal sign goes. And then the same as twice x. And twice means to multiply by 2. So this says 20 minus the quotient, so the answer to a division problem, of 7 and x is twice x. So that's the answer to number 1. Number 2, 4 times a number. So 4 times a number less than 10. So that means subtraction is equal to 16. So 4n minus 10 equals 16. That's the answer to number 2. Number 3, Frank has read 12 of the 32 chapters in his assigned book. He plans to finish the book by reading C chapters each day for 12 days until the book is due. Write an equation to represent the situation. So, 12 is the number of chapters he has already read. So, 12 plus a certain number has to equal 32. Well, of course, we know the, what the number is, but we want to write an, ex an equation with the scenario that's written here. Eight days reading C chapters. So, 8 times C. Now the best answer to me is if you put your 8C first. 8C plus 12 equals 32. That's the answer to number 3. Number 4, we're going to write a sentence for each equation. So I'm going to say the square of a number T added to 5 is the same as the sum of that number and 19. To me, that's the sentence. Well, I guess I should put a capital T. The square of a number t added to 5 is the same as the sum of that number and 19. Okay, let's do the same thing for number 5. I'm going to say 8 times the quantity. Remember, the quantity is the parentheses. The quantity of 2 times a number y less 6 times a number x is the same as, I could have written is equal to, is the same as the sum of 4 and twice a number. And you can be creative, or please do be creative. Don't be boring. I tried to be um, a little creative when not just saying 4 added to 2 times a number, because that would be correct. But try to be creative and use your math vocabulary. Now we're going to solve. And these first ones are going to seem so easy to you, and that will be wonderful. But we're going to solve, and we're going to discuss some different options that you may have. So to solve, I'm going to get V alone. I undo subtracting 9 by doing the inverse operation of adding 9, 
So v is going to equal negative 12 plus 9 is negative 3. I want you to look at equations like number 2, like this. Negative 81 is equal to, when you have plus a negative, go ahead and write that as minus 2. And then I'm going to add 2 to get d alone. So d is going to equal negative 79. For number 3, I believe all of you know you should divide by 3. So m will equal negative 8. And if you want to work ahead as I'm doing this and then check your answers as we're going along, then please do. Some of these fractions you might think, oh gosh, I need to listen because I'm not quite sure what to do. For number 4, since my numerator is 1, I'm just going to multiply both sides by positive 4. That makes the 4s go away. You're left with 1h, which I just wrote h, equals negative 8. Number 5 is basically the same thing. Number 5 could have been written as 1 half k equals negative 5. Those are the same thing. Multiplying by 1 half is the same thing as dividing by 2. So I'm going to get rid of the dividing by 2 by multiplying by 2. So k is going to equal negative 10. And for number 6, I'm going to get rid of the dividing by 4 by multiplying by 4. Negative t is going to equal 3 over 4 times 4 over 1 is 12 over 4, which is 3. Or you could have said the 4's cancel out, and I'm just left with 3. And now my t is not alone. I need to divide by negative 1 to get that t alone. So t, positive t, is negative 3. Number 7, I need to get rid of dividing by 3. How do I get rid of dividing by 3? Multiply by 3. So those cancel out. n is going to equal negative 12. Number 8, I'm going to turn that mixed number into an improper fraction by multiplying the denominator with the whole number and adding the numerator and keeping the denominator of 2. So 2 times 3 is 6. 6 plus 1 is 7. Now, there's lots of different ways you could do this. I'll show you one way. You could get rid of this dividing by 2 on the left, and you could multiply both sides by 2, and you'd be left with 7 equals 4 times h. Divide by 4, h will equal 7 over 4. That's one way you could get to the answer. The other way, of course, make that an improper fraction, is to get rid of multiplying by 2 you can multiply by one half. Dividing by two is confusing for students, and so that's why I don't encourage you when you have a fraction on the other side away from the variable to divide by two. I m would encourage you to multiply by one half. And we'll multiply numerator times numerator, that's seven. Denominator times denominator, that's four. So h equals seven over four. For number 9, I like to do this in two steps, although many teachers will teach you to do it in one step. I like to get rid of the dividing by 4 first by multiplying by 4. So I'd have 3 times h equals negative 36, and then I would divide by 3. Now, if you like the way that you were shown in middle school to solve that equation, please, please do. And a, a lot of teachers will probably um, give me some flack about solving it that way, but I have found with most students totally understand multiplying by 4 to get rid of the dividing by 4, and then to get the multiplying by 3, they understand to divide by 3. So whatever works for you, please continue doing that. For the next one, I want to do the same thing. I'm going to multiply both sides by 2, so I'm going to have negative 3m equals 10 over 7. Now I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 1 third. Whoops, which is fine. And that makes that go away and become positive m. And then I'm going to multiply numerator and numerator, so that's 10. 7 times negative 3 is negative 21. And that won't reduce, so that is my answer. Number 11, I'm going to add 6. 2a will equal 10, divide by 2, a is 5. Number 12, I'm going to subtract 4, 3m equals negative 15, divide by 3, 
m equals negative 5. Number 13, I'm going to get rid of dividing by 3. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 3, which makes that cancel out, and t minus 4 will equal 6. I'll add 4 to both sides. t will equal 10. Number 14 is different from number 13. You have to add 2 first. So n divided by 4 equals 8, and then get rid of the dividing by 4 by multiplying both sides by 4, and n will equal 32. Number 15 is just a little bit different because of where the, the, the variable is at. I'm going to add 2 to both sides to get negative 4p alone. So negative 16 equals negative 4p. Then I'm going to get my p alone by dividing by negative 4. p is going to equal positive 4. And notice I said p is going to equal positive 4. The symmetric property of equality says that 4 equals p and p equals 4 are the same thing. Number 16, now we have variables on both sides. I'm going to subtract the 4a. 5 plus 3a is going to equal negative 13. I'm going to subtract 5 so I can get my a isolated on the left. That will be negative 18, and now I can finish and get the a alone by dividing by 3. So a is going to be negative 6. Number 17, I've got to get rid of that fraction out of there. I've got to multiply both sides by 4. So 20y is going to equal, that goes away, um, 12y plus 16. I could have done that another way too, so if you see that other way, you're welcome to try that as well. I'm going to subtract 12y from both sides. That's 8y, and 8y is going to equal, I just noticed, noticed a mistake, and I'm just going to fix it right now instead of rewinding and fixing that. That should be um, 16. 12y plus 16, 8y equals 16 because we subtracted 12y. Divide by 8, y is going to equal 2. And then for number 18, I'm going to distribute 1 third to both of those. So 9 minus 1 third x. A negative times a positive is a negative. Negative 1 third times 12. Negative 1 third times 12 over 1 is negative 12 over 3. Or I could have reduced and said minus 4 equals 4 thirds x plus 3. I'm going to combine like terms on the left and that will give me a 5. I'm going to add 1 third x at the same time. So 5 is going to equal 5 thirds x plus 3. I'm going to subtract 3. 2 is going to equal 5 thirds x. I'm going to multiply both sides by 3. So 6 will equal 5x, and I'm going to divide by 5. x will equal 6 over 5. On to number 19. Now I'm going to determine if there's one solution, no solution, infinitely many solutions, or the textbook refers to it as the identity, but I'm going to refer to it as infinitely many solutions. One solution is obvious. No solution is when your variable cancels out and you've got a false statement. Infinitely many solutions is when your variable cancels out and you have a true statement. So let's try number 19. Distribute negative 12r minus 48 equals negative 10r plus 30. I can tell now that I'm going to have one solution because if I add 12r to both sides, my r's will not cancel out. So negative 48 is going to equal 2r plus 30. I'm going to subtract 30. Negative 78 is going to equal 2r. Divide by 2, I believe r is 39, negative 39. So I've got one solution. And you should also include that in your answer. For number 20, I'm going to distribute. I have 8g plus 48. Then I'm going to bring down that 5g. 3g plus 48 plus 3g plus 48. So I'm going to have 8g plus 48 equals 8g plus 48. 
Now, if you can realize you have the same, same, same thing on both sides here, you can stop and say, this is infinitely many solutions. If you don't notice that, I want you to watch what happens. This is also called the identity. I'm going to refer to it as infinitely many solutions. Identity because it's the same thing on both sides. But if you don't see that when you're first working this out, subtract your 8G and your variable cancels out. And you're left with the true statement 48 equals 48, which is infinitely many solutions. And then for the next one, 5X plus 5 equals, I'm going to distribute, 15x minus 12 minus 10x. So I've got 5x plus 5 equals 5x minus 12. If I subtract 5x from both sides, I'm left with 5 equals negative 12, which is definitely a false statement, which is no solution. Okay. Next, I'm going to solve for x. I'm going to subtract 3. Please do not let that a beside the x frighten you. I'm going to subtract 3. ax will equal 20. And to get x alone, I divide by a. So x is going to be 20 divided by a. That's the answer. For number 2, I'm going to add 5 first. 8 divided by AX is going to equal 2. I have to get rid of this dividing by AX first. So I'm going to multiply both sides by AX next. So 8 is going to equal 2 times A times X. And to get X alone, I want to get rid of multiplying by 2 and multiplying by A. So I'm going to divide by 2A. X is going to equal 8 divided by 2A is 4 over A. 8 divided by 2 is 4, and that A needs to stay in the denominator. Number 3, I'm going to subtract 2 first. So 4 will equal 6 divided by AX. Again, get rid of dividing by AX by multiplying by AX. So 4AX is going to equal 6. I need to get X alone, and so I will divide by 4A. So x will equal 6 over 4 divided by a, 6 over 4a, so sorry about that. Then I'm going to reduce the 6 and the 4 by 2, so my answer is 3 over 2a for that one. And then for number 4, I'm going to add 5. Negative 3 is going to equal negative ax, and then I'm going to divide by negative a to get x alone. So x is going to equal positive 3 divided by a. That's the answer to that one. For the next problem, I need to write an equation for the problem and then solve. The student council raised two-fifths of the money they need to cover the cost of the school dance with a bake sale. They raised an additional $150 selling raffle tickets. If the student council has raised $630, what is the cost of the dance? So X is cost of dance. Write an equation for the problem. Okay, so two-fifths times X, because they've raised two-fifths of the cost, plus they sold $150 for, from selling raffle tickets, and this is how much they have raised, $630. Okay, so let's subtract 150. Two-fifths times X is going to equal 0, 8, 480. And then I'm going to multiply both sides by 5. So 2X is going to equal... 5 times 0 is 0, 5 times 8 is 40, 5 times 4 is 20, plus 4 more is 2,400. 2,400, then I'm going to divide by 2, so X is going to equal $1,200. So the cost of the dance
is $1,200. That's what that problem is asking me. And then the last one, Liza earned some money by taking care of her neighbor's pet. She bought a drink for $1.95 and a concert ticket for $30. She bought a ring for $7.20 and then spent two-thirds of the remaining money on a wireless speaker. If Liza has $38.50 left, she has $38.50 left. And M is the amount of money. earned by Liza. Oh, look, there's a typo. Lisa and Liza. Okay, so bought a drink for $1.95. Concert ticket for $30. We'll subtract. Because if thirty-eight fifty is what she has left, so if I add a dollar ninety-five, that's what she had before she bought the drink. If I add thirty, that's what she had before she bought the concert ticket, and a ring for seven twenty, and two thirds. Whoops. Oopsie. Did not mean to do that, but that's okay. Okay, and <laughs> hold on. Two thirds times M. So two thirds times M minus seven twenty minus thirty minus one ninety five equals thirty eight fifty. Okay, I am going to add those up. Thirty-one ninety-five plus seven twenty. Thirty-nine fifteen. And then I'm going to add thirty-nine fifteen. So two thirds M is going to equal five, six, seventeen, seventy seven, sixty five. Then I'm going to multiply by three. Three times seventy seven, sixty five, fifteen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty one, twenty two, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, two thirty two, ninety five. Then divide by two. So two into two thirty two point ninety five is one one six okay forty bring down the nine which times two is eight. Fifteen, forty-seven. So I'm gonna say, uh, Liza earned. I'm not gonna go exactly to the penny. Approximately one hundred sixteen dollars, taking care of her neighbor's pet. Sorry, that's so messy. And that should be the answer.